We're back. Two seconds. Right where we left off. All right. So, yeah, um, I just couldn't think of anything crazier than me getting on that stage and trying stand-up. And it was genuinely terrifying for me. And I remember, like, I had a while to wait before it was my turn to, to get on stage. And I was just trying to think of what I might say. <clears throat> and um, what I came up with is something that I still think is funny to this day. I mean, the, my first joke was, um, hey, everybody, I'm in the mood for a blowjob. Does anybody want one? <laughs> and how did that go over? They laughed. People laughed. And uh, by the time I was kind of winging it, and, and I mean, people knew it, and, and I, 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 there was like a vulnerability about it, you know, like, um, I, uh, I don't know. My experience was that when I got on that stage, you know, people were rooting for me. You know, there was, there was like kind of a sense... Um, whether perceived or real, I really think that the, it's kind of the case that people who are fans of the work that I've done in my career, they feel like a, like kind of like they know me, and I'm not like I'm just having a, like there, there's an approachability about me, like I'm sort of like a, a regular dude. Yeah. And um, and I don't know, like it, like what what it like my experience is that people want me to do well, you know, like uh, they're rooting for me. They're not like trying to see me fail. Of course, once you get on stage, I mean, the fact that people already know you, it, it, it's helpful, mm. but only helpful for as long as you're getting on the stage. Now, once you're on there, you got to deliver, you know, and, I, and I, I'm, I'm acutely aware of that too. But um, when I got off that stage that night, I just thought to myself, wow, you know, I just made people laugh. Like I genuinely entertained them. And, uh, and I didn't, like, hurt myself at all, you know? Yeah, yeah. I didn't shove anything up my butt <laughs> at all. And, um, and it was really just, I thought, well, I mean, it just blew my mind. And before I left, I, I scheduled my return. And I remember before coming back, I actually had time to plan that return. And, and I sat down and I wrote, like, a whole, like, like uh, set, you know, yeah. of, of jokes. And, um, and it went there and, and that, like, I mean, it was kind of whatever. I mean, I was like, new. I'm not going to say it was great, but, but where I was looking to get laughs, I got laughs. And, uh, and, and it was just something else, man. It really was. Um, and it was, it was the best experience. So when I, uh, I left again, I said, you know what, I'm going to come back. And I thought, you know, I'm good at this. So I came back the next time. I didn't redo any of the material. I said, you know what, I'm good at this. And I just said, I'm going to get on the stage and I'm just going to figure it out. And I got on there and maybe I was, I was overconfident. I had no material and, I, and I, it was a disaster. Bomb. And uh, Yeah, it was a disaster. And, and um, you know, I'm, I'm a, a highly sensitive being, man. I'm, I have an overly developed concern for the opinions of others, man. Like, everything that makes me crave attention, you know, like... I needed, like, I, like, I'm really tuned into that, you know, yeah. and so, I, so I got, like, kind of my feelings hurt, you know, and, 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 and I, I sort of pulled back a little bit, and, 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 and what was going on with the drugs and alcohol at that time was, it was sort of, you know, becoming more intense, um, so it wasn't until after I got sober that I really, really dove in, I mean, I dabbled in the comedy um, here and there, but it was after I got sober I, I, I stopped going uh, to do appearances. You know, you get like hired to go like host a party in a, in sure. a nightclub or something. Yeah. I didn't want any part of that. I mean, I don't need to be there. You know, right. um, you know, and, and when you do get sober, you want to ask yourself like, if I'm going to be in, in a situation where people are drinking alcohol, you know, like or, or, or whatever, you just have to ask yourself, do I have a legitimate purpose for being there? And what I found was, I and mean, then no, I don't have any reason to go to, to a nightclub or a bar. But I had a reason to go to a comedy club, and I would do that regularly. Be like, what am I going to do tonight? You know what? I'm going to go to the comedy club. I'd be sitting in that comedy club, looking at that stage, thinking, you know, I should be on that stage. I should. You know, yeah. I have a reason for being here, and I should be on that stage. And uh, more and more, it was just like, I, uh, and, and um, we were filming Jackass 3D. And the, like one of the first interviews I did 
for like before the press machine even really started up, uh, I, I was Dane Cook was there. And I went, and they said, oh, dude, dude you're, you're next, but just barge in, just go sit down, just charge into his interview, it'll be great. So I walked in, I sat down next to him, you know, um, it was my first time meeting him, and I told him, I said, dude, like, I really want to, I want to dive into the stand-up, I've done it before, I, I like it, and, and I want to dive in. He said, cool, man, like, let, uh, you know, next week, Hollywood Improv, man, we'll get, we'll get you up. And so I was like, so I spent that week, like, writing, like, a new set. And I showed up, and, and I, I got on stage like two comics after Sarah Silverman. Oh, wow. And, and immediately before Dane Cook, just swimming with sharks at the Hollywood Improv, man. Yeah. And, uh, and I, did my, I did my material, and then Dane Cook closed the show, and then we sat down, and he gave me notes. You know? okay. First thing he said was, I'm not sending you back to the drawing board, which was, I was like, wait, hold on. Um, he just told me that, that my my that, 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 that it was good. Yeah, that, that means it's good. Yeah, <laughs> you got started. Right? You know, I was like, I mean, that was so encouraging, right? He says like, it's like saying your stuff worked, you know. Um, and he just had like stuff about about delivering it and, and relax, you know, like calm down and and uh, you know, and, and then like two nights after that, where you know we're at the another comedy club, you know, the Laugh Factory. Right. Do the same thing. And then the next night, the same thing. It was just like we... And the fact that Dane Cook like, took the time to really like, put me under his wing and like... I mean, what he was doing and like the actual like, you know, the actual nuts and bolts of the, the advice and the, the criticism that he was giving me was super helpful. But just the fact that he was taking the time to, to even give a crap about me doing comedy. I mean, just all of it put so much wind in my sails. And um, by the time, uh, by the time Jackass 3D came out, I mean, I was literally in the comedy club at like every night, you know? Right. I mean, just every night, and I was coming up with new stuff, and, and, um, and, and the day that Jackass 3D opened, I was on the Howard Stern show, and I, I um, <clears throat> I, uh, I said, hey, Howard, I've been doing stand-up, and, and um, I'm looking to do a gig in the, in the city tonight. <clears throat> well, not only, <clears throat> not only did I do a gig in the city that night, but uh, all of a sudden the phone started ringing, and, and they're like, hey, they want you to go here, they want you to go there. Wow. So <clears throat> I became a, like a, a headliner, like in the wake of Jackass 3D. And uh, I, you know, I, I didn't have that much material, you know, but but I but I was going for it. Where were you getting this material from? Like, I mean, you've lived a crazy life. I'm sure you've you had a million I, stories. You bet. Is I know, that yeah. where it's coming from? Just sure, your experiences. Man. Yeah, like, um, like I think that that my motivation in doing what uh, what I do, the um, the experiences of, of actually the stuff that I've done. And, and even more, the, um, the way that my life was changed, like, uh, as a result of the notoriety, and right. sort of just taking advantage of it, you know, like, for, like, basically, a, a, you know, alcoholic, drug addict, sex addict, you know, attention whore, you know, like, just the, the world turns into such a candy store when you show up on TV like that, and, uh, and I mean, it's just like, and, and people aren't going to be as candid about about like their experience with it as I am. You know, I'm just such a shameless bastard. Like that, uh, you know, if I if I got a blowjob from a transvestite, I will admit it, and I and I did. Right. <laughs> and, I, and, I'll, and I'll tell the whole damn story, you know. <laughs> and uh, I mean, I don't know if I'll tell it tonight, but because uh, because I you know I've, I've now now at this point I've been headlining, you know these comedy shows for for about four years now. And, uh, and I gotta say too, I mean, it's really douchey to, to say this, but um, I've just gotten so much better at it, you know? Like, I mean, even really good, you know? <laughs> I got, you know, and, and, and I, like, I'll, I'll, I'll temper my douchiness for saying that, like, by, with, with more douchiness, by pointing out, like, that for my four years of, of headlining comedy shows, um, like, uh, and I only found this out recently, like Ticketmaster, you know, people see shows and then they do reviews on Ticketmaster. Yeah. 
95% of all the reviews that um, have been uh, written on Ticketmaster for my comedy come with a recommendation to see my show. That's like an A plus average, man. Yeah, I know, and people on the internet are assholes. <laughs> <laughs> right? So 95% 90, of people say that my comedy show kicks ass, and, and uh, God, I'm just so stoked about that. And like, you know, I remember seeing Dane Cook um, a year after we, uh, you know, right around there, maybe a little over a year, you know, after we'd been, you know, sort of doing our thing together. And I told him, yo, dude, like, uh, I've done stand-up in 15 countries since I saw you last. And he just shook his head. He said, oh, my God. He said, comics hate you. (laughs) (laughs) And isn't that the ultimate compliment? I mean, yeah, it is. But the thing is, though... I mean, unless the, the 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 haters within the comedy community have been like like you know really uh, silent and uh, you know, and I mean there's been some haters, but but just nowhere near um, as many as as you would, might imagine, you know. Like and and I don't know why, but uh, I mean I I, I do, and it's because I, I really give a crap. A lot of people come into doing comedy already having established themselves in some other area of entertainment you know mm-hmm. like people with names who are famous uh, will, will do comedy and they'll kind of ride their name and uh, you know whatever do it and like and not necessarily care that much and um, you know for me it's like hey man I uh, I'm really in, in this you know um, I, I, I'm, I'm very clear that people don't know me as a stand up comedian you know, I know that I'm, that, that I'm making a leap, and, and, and that's why I've been, when I first started, it was like a ton of stunts as well as comedy, you know, and mixing it together. I still do stunts and tricks in the show, but um, another, you know, and I just work really hard at it, man, you know, and, uh, and I don't know, man, I really care about what I'm doing, and I think that's why I've been more accepted in it. Uh, another thing that I do is after every single show, regardless, no matter what, uh, I, I don't go anywhere or do anything until I've taken a photo with every single person in the audience that wants one. So every show comes with its own little after party. So everybody who wants to meet me or ask me something or tell me something, everybody gets their chance, everybody gets a photo. And I do that as, like selfishly because to, have, to send everybody home with a photo so that they can put it on their social media and say, dude, I went to go see Steve-O and, and he was hilarious. You know, like that's how... Like, I make that transition. And, and it's been just going really well, man. I've been on an absolute tear. And it doesn't matter the size of the audience? It doesn't matter, man. Like, uh, my, my experience has been that, uh, oh, Joan Rivers died. Oh, oh no. Really? Uh, oh. Oh. Man. Wow. Um, yeah, That's she's shocking. great. I'll just put a damper on this interview. Yeah. Oh, she's yeah. great. Yeah. Um, but, uh, yeah, dude, that totally just gave me the, the hugest brain fart. Um, but uh, in, in any case, man, it's um, it's uh, it's a good deal, dude. I'm super yeah. psyched about it. Well, we're psyched to have you here, man. Can't wait. Um, so if you don't have your tickets yet, selectyourtickets.com for uh, Steve-O tonight, Kelowna Community Theater. You don't want to miss this. Uh, I'm going to give away a pair of front row seats. Cool, right man. now, and I think be I, careful in the front row. Oh, yeah. I'm not, I'm not. I mean, I don't want, like. Uh, I mean, I don't ever say that to make people feel bad or, or or like really you know hurt anybody or anything. But but I do love making people intensely uncomfortable, and, and the front row is absolutely. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, the front rows are real danger zone. So if you'd like to be one of Steve O's <laughs> victims tonight, um, we mentioned earlier in the interview that it is the age of the uh, what. Fill in that blank. Age, ah, all right. And if if, uh, the first person to do that at 763-8800 is getting front row seats for the Steve-O show tonight. It is the age of the what? Give us a show. All right, cool, man. Hey, dude, I'm really enjoying it. You be at the show? I'm I'm introducing you, man, yeah. Oh, excellent.